So you want to make a Minecraft server. You're all excited for the new update, you can't wait to play with your friends on it, but you just don't know how to make one. The snapshots are out, so I'm going to show you exactly how to make the vanilla server for Minecraft, and once the spigot files are released, I will release a video on that ASAP showing you how to make one with plugins, which is where you can add like shops and warps and all that awesome stuff like Mineplex and Hypixel has. So first thing you want to do is open up your favorite web browser. Mine is Google Chrome. So and then right now you will head to moyang.com and then just scroll down a little bit find the latest snapshot click on read more and then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of this you'll see this minecraft server jar so click on that to download it and then once it's done downloading we'll just wait for this to finish you can head to your desktop create a folder or you can just head anywhere you want I guess so create a folder just call it whatever you want I'm gonna call mine server open up that folder now just put the file that you just downloaded into that server folder and then you can rename it to just Minecraft or just server or something simple like that. Now uh, just create a new text document. If you don't have Notepad++, I'll link that in the description. It's very helpful to use. So and just name this whatever you want. I just usually name mine start. Very easy to find. So open it up, and then you're going to paste a line of text that's in the description. It'll be labeled start.bat, and then you can paste that into there. And so you can just change the text here to match your jar file that we just named. And then you can just save as, and then at the end of this, get rid of text, and then put bat right there. And then hit save. You'll see two files now. So delete the text document, and now you've got start.bat. So once you open that up, it'll load the libraries and such, and then it will close it out immediately. Now, if you think something was wrong, but you see this EULA file right here, nothing is wrong. Just go in here, change it to true once you have read all of these. Uh, be sure to read these. These are very important so you don't get in trouble. Uh, I've read them before. So that's just read that and then mark it as uh, true. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> okay, so once you've got that done, you can go ahead and start the server again by double-clicking that. Now, it'll load your libraries again. It'll create all the worlds and spawn areas. And all of your settings will be loaded in for it. And I'll get on to changing the server settings right after this finishes. So it'll say done. And what you can do now to stop the server, just type stop and hit enter. It'll save it, and it'll close out. So now what you can do is go into the server.properties file. This is where you can change your main main settings for the server. Like, I guess you could change the NPCs and flight, all a bunch of stuff. I'll have you uh, look through this yourself if you're interested in that. Probably the main thing you're going to be changing in here is MOTD. And what the MOTD is, it's that little line of text under your server name. Like when you add a server in Minecraft, you know how it's always got that custom text like that server has. Like Mineplex just says Mineplex or something and some of their new mini games there. Well, this is what you set here. And then if you want to um, put color codes on there or basically just kind of modify the text, um, just hold down the alt key and press 21 on your numpad to get this little symbol there. Uh, if it's not entirely working for you or you don't have a numpad, uh, uh, this little symbol will be in the description. I used to always just use like a copy and paste thing because I never had a, a numpad. So that's just what I do there. And now you can just name it whatever you want. Like six is gold. So I'm just going to say server exclamation mark. There we go. And I can just save that there. So, yeah, you just go through these options yourself. And that's pretty much that. Now, I want to get on to another thing in the batch file just before I go on to port forwarding. So if you open this back up, you'll notice that there's the 1024 right here. Both of these are the megabytes of RAM dedicated to the server. 
So let's say you have 16 gigabytes of RAM available and you're going to be doing some pretty intensive stuff on the server, like a lot of plugins and a lot of players. So you're definitely going to want to have more than one gigabytes of RAM dedicated. So let's say you want two. So you just 2048 and that's uh, just two gigabytes in the megabytes form. So just like that, change both of those. And next time you start your server, it'll load it and it'll let it use two gigabytes of RAM instead of just one. And you can set that to pretty much any option you want. Just make sure it's a reasonable amount and it's available on your uh, computer. You can't set it to 16 if you don't have 16 available. All right, so I'm going to minimize that now. And after um, we installed this stuff, we got this from the Mojang website. But when the normal Minecraft 1.11 is out, or any of those versions, you're not going to get it from here. You're going to get it from Minecraft.net. And the way you're going to do this is if you bought the game, hopefully you have, and you're not uh, stealing it, I guess. You can just go ahead and log in or do whatever you want to get to the download page. I'm just going to go through download so I don't have to log in right here. So you can just do Minecraft.net slash download if you've already got the game. So you can go uh, down here, set up your own Minecraft server, click on that, and this will also give you uh, the jar file, and this will be 1.11 once Minecraft 1.11 is out. So you go ahead and download this and do the same exact steps that we've been doing. And now that we're done with that, we're going to get on to the port forwarding part of things, because in order to play with your friends, you have to have a port forwarded server that will let it go through your router and connect to the internet, basically. So, in your, if you're running on Windows, this is basically what w this uh, tutorial is for, Windows. Press the Windows key or go into your search, search box or run and type CMD and hit enter. That'll open the command prompt and type IP config in here just like that. Press enter and now you'll be able to see like the default gateway and your IPv4 address and stuff. This is what you need right here. So your default gateway, go ahead and type that into your address bar. I've already got mine there, so I'm just going to hit enter on that. And depending on your router, it may have like a default uh, login to it. Some may not. You might have changed yours yourself. Uh, and don't get this mixed up with your Wi-Fi password because this isn't the same thing. This is, a, this is where you can get in and change the settings from your computer. So mine's just the default stuff, admin, password, just basic stuff. And so once this loads in... Uh, I'll show you how to get to the port forwarding side. Um, most routers are very similar. They fall under most of the same basic terms. Like firewall, that will be for port forwarding and stuff like that. Because that goes through your firewall and like onto the internet and all that stuff. Um, like I've seen some things, that where they call them virtual servers. Or some of them call them just basically gaming or stuff like that. So just scroll around in your settings, figure out where it is, like here, virtual service slash port forwarding. So we'll go here, let's get rid of that. And once this is loaded in here, uh, so I've already got some stuff in here, so let me just show you, um, let's see, yeah, so let me just show you uh, how to create the ports. Yeah, most of the routers are the exact same way, so Yours will probably be pretty similar to follow. And most likely you'll have an add button in the description. I'm just going to call it uh, Minecraft. And then, yeah, just Minecraft. And your inbound port is going to be 25565 and then 25565. You can change this to whatever you want, but if you have it 25565, that'll make it so when people try to connect, they don't have to change that port box or put the colon etc on the end and that'll be the same for your local port sometimes they'll call this the outbound port and so yeah just kind of figure that out um, format you'll have TCP or UDP but make sure you have both selected so it might be TCP slash UDP but just make sure both of them will be running alright so your private IP address that's your IPv4 address in here right here Keep in mind that this will change depending on your uh, system or whatever. Like mine, uh, I don't know why, I don't know what the cause of it changing is, but I do know that every once in a while it'll be a different thing. 
for my computer. So I, sometimes if people aren't able to connect, I'll just double check the IP config thing and I'll look and see if that's the same as I have already in here. But once you got that, just add the server and I will wait for mine to complete because it goes through a little reboot or whatever once uh, I've clicked it. But this time, there we go. All right, it seemed to be frozen for a second. So that's that right there. Now you no longer need your command prompt being open. And now, there you go, that's that. And so you wanna have people connect to the server. Well, the way you're gonna do that, sorry, I typed the wrong thing. You're gonna need your uh, external IP. That's the way people will connect to your computer. Um, so there's your IP right on the screen there. It's blurred out for me uh, because I don't know, I just don't want you knowing my IP, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, give that to people. Um, but just keep in mind who you give it to, I guess. I, I don't know. I've heard it can be a little uh, dangerous just basically putting your IP out. Like, hackers can get into your computer through that. It's basically, it's your computer's exact address. So just keep that in mind. Like, But most of the time you're safe. Just go on, like, Planet Minecraft and stuff. I don't know. If you want something different, just go to no-ip.org, and that will set up a, uh, a like a different IP for it, so you can have like words on it instead. Anyways, so you'll just copy this in there. There we go. Now you can X out of that. So just get that memorized or something if you want to give it to your friends. Now we'll head back into our server files here. So I'm just going to show you. Uh, that we've still got everything where it should be. Nothing has changed in here, of course. Uh, so I'm going to start up Minecraft here. And yeah. So there we go. Latest version of Minecraft. Perfect. That's what you uh, will be running on. Just make sure your version of Minecraft is the exact same one as your server is running on. Because if it's not, then you're not going to be able to connect to it. So just keep that in mind as well. So I'm going to minimize this, full screen this, and now um, if you're running it off of your own computer, like you're not really going to have other people to connect, but if you have a server that, that works with plugins and you don't really want to do port forwarding stuff, if it's on the device that you're on, you can use localhost and that will connect directly um, through your own machine. Um, so yeah, now as you can see I'm in. Everything's working just fine. Beautiful biome here, 1.11. Yeah, we are on 1.11. 16W41A. All right, so as you can see, the Minecraft server's loaded up. And now I'm just going to show you how you can use a couple of commands in the command prompt here, or the server window. And you don't put a slash on it, if you're wondering. So you can type help, and that will show the help pages in here. Or a question mark, I believe. Yep, same thing. But you can do stuff like here. Um, keep in mind some stuff only works in game. But what you could do is like you could do, I believe, say, and I'll just type hi. There we go. Server said hi. Or you can like op people. So I'm going to op myself. Here I MC. Oh, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> you got to spell it right, of course. There we go. And opt myself. There we go. Now it's ops. And then you can like change the time. So I'll change it to night. Boom, there you go. You can do all sorts of stuff in there. And then once you've opted yourself, of course, you can do stuff in game. But anyways, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please comment them down below. I'd be more than happy to help you out. And also, keep in mind that if you're looking for a video to show you how to get the plugins for 1.11, be sure to come check out my video on that. As I said, I will get that out right when I can. And so you won't miss hardly anything on that. And if you're just wanting uh, plugins right now, you can go check out my Minecraft 1.10 spigot version. Um, so I'll have a link to that in the description and uh, in the cards on screen, if I remember. I know, I guarantee description, but cards, I don't know. I forget a lot of the times. Anyways, so I really hope that helped you out. And uh, if you could, give the video a thumbs up if it did. Share it with your friends or the public, just cause. And subscribe to be notified when I upload that spigot version. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!
So let's get straight into it.